Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Two weeks before the contract runs out and UAW President Sean Fain makes it clear where he thinks the bargaining is going. And one thing I want to tell you is this trash can is overflowing with the bull that the big three continue to peddle. Yeah, on top of that, the union has filed unfair labor practice complaints against Stellantis and General Motors with a National Labor Relations Board. Thanks for being with us. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. Sean Fain has made it clear he views September 14th as a hard deadline, not, he says, as a reference point. Mara McDonald live on Detroit's east side tonight. Uh, this drumbeat for a strike just keeps getting louder and faster. That's right, Devin. Fain telling his membership tonight that it needs to be prepared. He did, however, dangle out some hope that perhaps all of this could be resolved in the next two weeks. Fain's public updates and blunt assessments are a far cry from what the membership has seen in recent years. I want to be very clear about this. Our goal is not to strike. Our goal is to bargain a fair contract. But if we have to strike to win economic and social justice, then we will. In his update, Fain told the membership, despite giving the autos what they expect from a contract four weeks ago, he's heard nothing back from GM and Stellantis, which is why the union filed an unfair labor practice with the NLRB today. He has heard back from Ford. Ford's wage proposals not only fail to meet our needs, it insults our very worth. Ford is offering a 9% wage increase over the life of the contract. The UAW is asking for 46%, in addition to many other demands, like an end to the two-tiered wage system and putting temporary workers on a path to full employment. So, no consensus building at this point. If we want higher wages, better benefits, and a better future for ourselves and our families, then we're going to have to fight like hell to win it. Back here live, in statements from both Stellantis and from GM tonight, they're remarkably similar. They refute all of this unfair labor practice charge completely. They call it meritless. Now, Ford CEO Jim Farley sending out a statement tonight, and he says it's a lengthy one, that he believes that what Ford is offering here is a generous offer, and he's got some numbers. He says that if you're an average UAW worker, with the contract that is being offered here, if you take into account the wage increase, the lump sum bonus payment, as well as OT, that you're looking at going from $78,000 a year to $92,000 a year in the first year of the contract. We're live on Detroit's east side tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Well, this is something and hard to miss the poetry that we are watching all of this as we head into Labor Day weekend. All right, Mara. Well, not even a week into school, and Detroit students are getting a good report card. Detroit Public Community Schools releasing its state assessment results showing across-the-board improvement. Jacqueline Francis is live tonight with what else stands out about this report, Jacqueline. Lately, education has been all about getting back to pre-pandemic levels. Detroit Public Schools Community District says that they've not only done that, but they're also outpacing statewide performance. Back to school on a high note. The state's largest public school district is releasing its 2023 MSTEP scores. The assessment given to third through eighth grade students every spring, along with high school juniors. Detroit Public Schools Community District reporting it's largely recovered from the pandemic in grades three through eight, outpacing statewide performance gains. The district also reporting literacy proficiency and college readiness performance exceeded pre-pandemic numbers and set record highs for historic district performance. In a news release, Superintendent Nikolai Vidi said he's not surprised by this improvement, stating their central office and principal teams worked better together this past year with a focus on teaching and learning. Earlier this week, he hinted at this success while talking with us on the first day of school. You know, last year, um, it was really about getting back to the reform and a focus on student achievement. And uh, last year's performance, although not officially released yet, we're going to see good improvement from 21, 22 to 22. 23. Dr. Vidi aiming for similar success in the year ahead. Our goal this year, accelerate the solid improvement we're seeing, build up on enrollment, especially on the pre-K level, um, and then just improve student achievement because we know to really get to that next level with achievement, we just need students in school more frequently.
In the coming weeks, parents can expect their students to bring home a hard copy of the individual test results. Families can reach out to their students' teachers to set up a time to talk about those results and how to best support at-home learning. Reporting live in Detroit, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Okay, Jacqueline, we appreciate it. Dearborn's fire chief is now on paid leave after his arrest, accused of drunk driving. Body cam video shows the arrest Tuesday morning on Telegraph near Dartmouth in Dearborn Heights. It comes after Joseph Murray was taken into custody Tuesday morning. Police say he was going 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. That's why they stopped him. But then they say they found him drunk. He refused a breathalyzer at the scene, was given a blood test at the police station, though we are still waiting for the final results and potential exact charges. Livonia police say when they arrested a bank robbery suspect, he had his four-year-old son in the getaway car. The robbery happened Tuesday morning at the Comerica Bank on Five Mile near Merriman. Court documents show a robber pointed a gun at several employees. Investigators tracked the getaway car to a nearby church parking lot and found the little boy inside the vehicle. He was turned over to his mother and the suspect arrested. Happening tomorrow, two men from Nigeria will be back in court in connection with a sextortion scheme that ended with a Marquette teenager taking his own life. 17-year-old Jordan DeMay committed suicide last March. Investigators say he was targeted through Instagram by three men, including brothers. Uh, the two pleaded not guilty in a federal court in Grand Rapids, Samuel and Samson Agoshi, who were extradited to Michigan earlier this month. A detention hearing is now scheduled for tomorrow morning. Tropical storm Idalia has now moved out over the Atlantic Ocean after making a rare and historic strike as a Category 3 hurricane. Uh, over in Charleston, South Carolina, rising waters are taking over the streets. Idalia pushing water levels in the harbor past nine feet. Uh, a tornado earlier was caught on video tossing a car over a South Carolina highway with the here, Here's the video I was just mentioning uh, with the storm over open water tonight. There is some optimism in the face of this widespread devastation. You know, at the end of the day, everything is all materials. It's all replaceable. Um, you know, so as long as everybody's safe and we all have our lives, then I think we're doing pretty well. But there is, of course, a long road ahead for many. President Biden paid a surprise, surprise visit to FEMA's headquarters today, calling on Congress to ensure that FEMA has the money it needs to continue to show up for communities impacted not only by Adalia, but the wildfires in Hawaii as well. He's expected to survey damage in Florida come this Saturday. Former President Donald Trump's election interference case in Georgia is going to be televised. Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports all of the court proceedings will be broadcast live on the Fulton County Court's YouTube channel. Uh, meanwhile, the former president has pleaded not guilty in the Georgia elections interference case. He had been scheduled to be arraigned in person on Wednesday, but he waived that appearance and decided to enter a formal plea through court filings. His arraignment marks the fourth time. Donald Trump has pleaded not guilty to criminal charges since leaving the White House. Senator Mitch McConnell gets the green light to return to work after freezing up in front of a reporters for a second time. But doctors are now saying they know what caused those scary moments. According to a statement from Dr. Brian P. Monahan, the 81-year-old consulted with a neurology team and his lightheadedness can be attributed to a concussion or dehydration. President Biden spoke to the Senate Minority Leader on Thursday and says he sounded like his old self. A sigh of relief tonight for residents on Detroit's east side after a blighted building is demolished. City of Detroit's construction and demolition department began demolishing the site of a former metal stamping plant. We're told the building was abandoned in 2014, and since then, neighbors say it's become an area for a lot of illegal dumping. Tonight, they are relieved it's coming down. The largest nuisance was um, the uh, dumping of uh, tires, uh, cars, etc. There was just uh, an influx of dumping on the property uh, on a regular basis. My neighbors couldn't be here with me, but they share in my excitement because we want to see it come down. We'd rather see just an empty lot than to see this dilapidated building anymore. Building's demolition is funded through the American Rescue Plan Act. We told you this week about a young Roseville man who had his trike stolen from him, leaving him with no way to get around. Well, tonight he's back on three wheels and loving it. This is a great story, great ending to this story. Devin's yep. trike was stolen last Thursday from the family's home in Roseville. He's fighting some health issues and used the trike to keep his legs moving. When he found out his bike was stolen, he was crushed and his mother put out a GoFundMe. The community then responded in a big way.
it, it just touches my heart that how many people donated donated to Devin that know him that have touched that Devin has touched that want to help Devin. Stony Creek bike shop made the new trike and delivered it today to Devin. Family says this one is more secure. Awesome.